Okay, in this video, we are gonna be doing CalGB problem set 43. The problems and a playlist are in the description below. Let's do it. Given f prime is x minus four times x plus three all over x minus one. Uh, where is f of x increasing, right in tangent line, decreasing concave up? All right, so standard things, which is pretty much how the problem sets work. They're not uh, revolutionary, they're just practice. Where is f of x increasing? Let's do a sign chart. So uh, I'm gonna put all the numbers in order on the sign chart. Remember, we're given f prime, so we don't have to do anything to get that. We just know negative three, one, and four. Um, and now, at if I take a negative a billion and plug it in, I get negative, 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 three negatives, negative overall. And if you look at it, everything is a first degree factor, which means we're gonna have a sign change at every one of these. So I'm just gonna do that. I'm gonna put in the sign changes. Um, what I do when I use this strategy is I usually also will test like the last one. Not a hard, fast rule that that will save you though, because like, you know, you could have had, what, like an even number of sign changes should have happened. So like you would still be getting it right or whatever. Um, but just check it and see. So we're looking for increasing. So you can see you're increasing between negative three and one and also for x greater than four. So let's write that down. Increasing negative three to one and x greater than four because f prime is greater than zero there. I think that's a good answer. Um, if f of three equals eight, write the equation of the line tangent to f of x at x equals three. All right, so we need to know f prime. We're given f of three is eight. So we just need to find f prime. So let's do that f prime of three, just sub in, you get negative one times six over two, which is definitely negative three. Um, and then our tangent line in point slope form, y minus eight equals negative three quantity x minus three. All right, next up, where is f decreasing and concave up? All right, we already know where f is decreasing. That's when x is less than negative three and between one and four based on the sign chart for f prime. Then what we need to do is figure out the second derivative. What I wanna do, like you could do the quotient rule on this, what I'm, I'm gonna do something weirder. Uh, I'm gonna do some like algebra stuff. So first I'm gonna expand. And then what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna do division, but I'm gonna do synthetic division. So I put a one in the box and then one, negative one, negative 12, run through the process, have a video on that if you're not sure what I'm doing here, or just do long division, which is you know just as easy to be honest. Um, so this leaves us with uh, our function f prime um, can be rewritten as x minus 12 over x minus one. The reason I did that was, first of all, it doesn't take super long, um, and it's easy to find the derivative of that. It's easier to find the derivative of what we just found than it is to find the derivative of the original. It's a weird thing with derivatives. If you like algebraically simplify some stuff or do some manipulations, sometimes the result is way easier to deal with. So I'm gonna find the derivative of this to be one and then plus 12 over x minus one squared. I'm thinking of the original as x minus 12 quantity x minus one to the negative first. So I can just bring the exponent down, subtract one. That's where that came from. I'm gonna get a common denominator. So I'm just expanding the, the common denominator is x minus one squared. I expanded that. I got x squared minus two x plus one plus 12 is where the 13 comes from. Um, now we have to like think about this. So I need the sign chart from, uh, from a. So I'm just going to import that. Um, and now I need to make a sign chart for this. Well, the numerator x squared minus 2x plus 13 uh, is never less than zero. It is just always positive. And you can like do some work on that or you can just kind of think about it like as y intercept of 13, it opens up. Uh, you can find the discriminant b squared minus 4ac, like a lot of things you can do. I just looked at it and I was like, that is always positive. Um, and then the denominator, no matter what I do, well, no matter what I sub in that I'm allowed to sub in is always going to be positive. So I have positive or positive. I just have to make a, I mean, do I have to make a sign chart? I guess one is the only thing that goes on the sign chart. And then everything is just going to be pluses. So like a lot of pluses, we're putting a lot of pluses. So it's very obvious what happens on intervals, although they're all pluses. So like, I don't know. Um, and then the question was decreasing and concave up. Okay. So this thing is always concave up. If, if we had put all negatives, then we would have been like, there is no interval, but it's always concave up. We know that it's decreasing for X less than negative three and between one and four. So I'm gonna say F of X is decreasing concave up for X less than negative three and one less than X less than four because F prime is less than zero, F double prime is greater than zero there. So answered and justified. All right, next question. Evaluate the derivative with respect to x of five to the x cubed. 
I think in the problem sets, I'm a little obsessed with the derivative of a to the x and a little obsessed with uh, the graph of absolute value of x over x. I feel like I hit those topics really hard for some reason. I don't know if when I was writing the problem sets, I had like just given a quiz where nobody knew it or something. Hard to say, but like, there you have it. If you've done all the problem sets, you've run into this kind of question frequently. So we're gonna do the derivative with respect to x of five to the x cubed. So the derivative of a to the x is a to the x natural log of a. So this will be five to the x cubed times the natural log of five. Just get that out of the way, like as soon as you can, just times the natural log of five times the derivative of the exponent. So the exponent is x cubed, so we'll have a three x squared. And then I think a normal person organizing this would write three natural log of five times x squared times five to the x cubed. I don't know, maybe that's not right. Maybe, well, no, it's the right answer, but maybe people wouldn't organize it that way. Hard to say. Anyway, that's the end of this problem set. I hope you found this helpful and good luck.